What is the difference between a mage and a sorcerer in the world of Ancient Magus Bride? And how does Chizé fit into it? Before we begin, the series uses the term alchemist and sorcerer as synonyms for one another, as in the Japanese, the term for this grouping of people is literally translated to be master of the technique of magic, which can easily be localised to mean either a sorcerer or an alchemist. So it is ultimately up to the person translating the Japanese to decide which variation to use. So you will see the terms alchemist and sorcerer used to describe the same character, with the only difference being who actually translated the source material. To keep things simple for the sake of this video, I'll be using the term sorcerer to prevent any confusion, as this is the phrase the anime uses. Since we are already discussing sorcerers, I'm going to start with them. Sorcerers are similar to mathematicians in the way they use magic, as they follow a set of rules surrounding magic to grant themselves power. They take the complicated rules surrounding magic and turn it into a more structural and logical format, which in turn leads to them finding more rules, which they can then use to find even more complicated magic, which is similar to the way magic works in High School DxD, or a less volatile version of the Magic in the Magicka game series. Their use of magic is the first major difference between mages and sorcerers, and the reason why they use magic the different ways is because of their second major difference, which is that sorcerers are not born with magic inside them. This means that rather than use the magic they have inside themselves, they have to turn their own physical energy into magic. This is partly the reason why they are sometimes translated as alchemists rather than sorcerers, as rather than cast spells directly, they have to use internal alchemy to produce the magics and spells that they desire. Most sorcerers, even though they use the power of the magical world, do not have a connection to it, as they lack the sight, which is the ability to see magical creatures, and on top of this they age at the same rate as normal people. The best example of a sorcerer in the series would be Alice, as although she cannot see magical creatures, as demonstrated by this scene, she still practices magic. And speaking about magical powers, let us move on to what mages are. Mages are magical users who absorb magic naturally through their surroundings or by borrowing the power from spirits, fairies or otherworldly beings of a supernatural variety. They can use this magic to create miracles, which are spells that break the rules of the natural order of the world, like turning into a phoenix and flying from Iceland all the way back down to Hampshire. This allows them to cast far more creative magical spells than sorcerers, with mages spells being unique to their user, as they can cast and create nearly any spell they desired, as long as they had the magic for it. The fact that they can generate magic also means that mages have the sight and can always see other magical creatures like spirits and fairies. Additionally, like fairies, they also have a very long lifespan, as shown by Rav, Vindal's teacher, who is thousands of years old. This comes as both a blessing and a curse, as on one hand, being able to live forever allows you to achieve and do many different things you'd not be able to normally do in one lifespan. The flip side to this is that unless your friends and family also have long lifespans, you'll watch them age and die far earlier than you, and this will unfortunately be the case for Angelica Barley, who not only knew her husband when she was a child, will sadly also see him die of old age far earlier than herself and her daughter, which will bring her untold pain and sadness. Unless a magical solution is found, that is. Now how does Chise fit into this? Well, it is that she is a slave beggar, which is a mage who passively absorbs and generates almost unlimited magical energy, but whose body is not designed to do that. So as you can imagine, this can easily lead to them to overdoing their magical output if untrained, suffering severe damage and possibly even dying as a result. Since slave beggars also produce magical energy, it attracts fairies and other beings towards them. And since they have the sight, this can confuse and scare them when growing up, as they will see monsters which no one else can see, like Chizé did when she was growing up. For me personally, this makes Slay Beggars the most interesting magic users in Ancient Maker's Bride, as not only are they the most powerful human users, but are also the most vulnerable and need proper training if they are truly to exploit their latent abilities. This has been a short rundown of the differences between sorcerers and mages, and I really hope this helps you better understand the world of Ancient Maker's Bride in time for the next episode.